where to even start with that? That was just shambolic. From start to finish, awful. Just uh, maybe even worse than some of the stuff we were served up on the company. It was shocking, embarrassing. Yeah, it was, well, it was embarrassing. That's not even being too harsh. And like, this just to forewarn anyone who's watching, like, if you're going to get upset by negativity, like I had people last week upset by negativity and on Twitter and stuff like that. If you, if you think it's negative, don't watch because I'm about to be negative. So, because that's, we're dealing in facts here, not like cuckoo land. Let's be positive. There's nothing to be positive about today. Nothing. So if you just, if you want in positivity, you're in the wrong place. Just, I can't even sit here now and say manager got it wrong tactically because it's not all on him. Like, did he pick the right team? Maybe he didn't. But what's, what choice has he got? His whole team, the whole squad's been sold. He's had the rug pull from beneath him and that comes from the top. That squad today was an embarrassment an absolute embarrassment. Some of them lads wouldn't even compete in League One who played today. It was embarrassing. The team we played against Luton the other week was top-level championship, maybe even bottom-prem, and we turned that out today. It's a joke. The team's been disbanded. The whole team's been disbanded, and you can't keep doing it. It's the third summer in a row now we've had a new squad. You can't keep doing it. So people say, well, you come down, you have to sell players. You don't. It's not true. You don't have to sell players. Look at Leeds last year. Kept hold of all the best players. And granted, they didn't go up. Leicester kept hold of a lot of the best players. Went back up. Southampton, all right. I think Southampton loaned quite a few out. But again, straight back up. Because they've not got that massive overhaul that we have. It's three seasons in a row. You can't keep doing it. People being like saying to me and... Oh, well, we had to sell. We've got to bridge the revenue. It's rubbish. It's absolute rubbish that people who like sympathising with it want you to believe. The revenue difference between the Championship and the Premier League with your parachute payments is between like 50. It's probably about 50 million when you account for wage cuts. We sold Company, sold Odeber, Murich, Twine, and we bridged that gap already. All right, we maybe then have to sell Odeber, but we're not stopping there. Like, we're selling the whole squad. Like, what are we doing? We're just self-sabotaging the uh, promotion. Like, and I know people say, well, God, give him chance to replace him. But why? no one knows why we're selling. Like, if you're selling all these players, you must be in financial difficulty. They must be. So if that's what... Because you wouldn't sell them. 15 players haven't gone into that club and said, I want to leave Alda Keel, Twine... Obafemi, like everyone who's been linked with Move, Vegas, Amdouni, Trafford, everyone who's been linked with the Move, they haven't all gone into to Alan Pace's office and said, "Look, I want to leave." Doesn't work like that. Football doesn't work like that. Fifteen players won't all want to leave in the summer, so it's, it's BS, right? Don't let anyone tell you that's the case because it's not. We, it's, it's really annoying me that today. We're selling players, but we're not even getting good money for them. We sold Odeber for twenty-five million with a ten percent sell-on. What's all that about? We we sell Trafford. We're paying twenty. We sell Murich. We paid tw we sell like pay City twenty. We're getting twenty percent on everyone we sign and selling our own for ten. We sold Burge for twenty mil. He had three years left on his contract after we signed him for twelve. We didn't even double our money on him. It's embarrassing. Something at the top of this club stinks. It stinks what's going on. And I don't care who we get in to replace these players. What's happened this summer is wrong. You've disbanded a whole team. You can't... It's very unlikely. And, I mean, people say we did it under... Like, when Dice left and company came in. But it wasn't the same. What It wasn't the same. We, we sold maybe, like, seven of our, like, players. But none of them were... Oh, maybe Tarkovsky, me, McNeil, Pope, so probably four starters. Like, we've, we're have we about to lose near enough a whole first choice 11. Trafford will go. Odeber will go. Uh, Odeber's gone, sorry. Burge is gone. O'Shea will go. So there's Trafford, O'Shea, Odeber, Burge. Amdouni would be first choice probably in this league as well if, if you were picking your 11 strongest players. So there's five. And like who else we lost Taylor from last year he was first choice left back and's better than that Perez because he is hopeless 
or he was today anyway, and I, I, people were raving over him against Luton. He was hopeless then as well. Like Technically, he, str he really struggles. Uh, he doesn't do out for me yet. Give him time, yeah, but for me, no. Don't get it. We've just got no squad. Th there's no players. Like, I, like I've made a list because I couldn't even remember them all. So today we played CG Egan Riley at centre-half. He's not a centre-half. We have McNally on the bench and a guy you've just loaned and are going to spend £12 million on next summer. Why are you not playing him? That one's probably on the manager, but I can see why he's not picked Humphries. He's only been here. But what choice has he got? McNally or Egan Riley? Like, neither are good enough at centre-half in this league. Egan Riley's not even a centre-half, so what does that say for McNally? Played Hitonji on the wing. He's not a winger. Square pegs, round holes. J-Rod, not a 10. He's not. And this one will upset people. Vitinho, he's not a winger. He is not a winger. He's hopeless out wide. He's a fullback playing on the wing. Yeah, he does a step over and everyone loses their minds. Oh, he's great on the wing. He's not. He's not a winger. He played on the wing at Luton to combat Doughty. It was a tactic. He played on the wing to help out Roberts. Vitinho's not a winger. He's not a fullback either. I don't know what he is. He's just... He's like a, he's a wing back. He's not a right back. He's not a right winger. Vitinho's like a wing back where he's he's helping out and he's got someone to cover around him because he's no good going forward, really, when he's playing on the wing and he can't play on his own at right back. He's a wing back and if he don't play wing back, he, he shouldn't play. Sambo comes on on the wing. He's a full back. Well, what are we doing? Why? Why we've come down with thirty odd players and we're playing square pegs in round holes on match day three. Ridiculous. He brought Amdouni on and he played as an eight alongside J Rod. To J Rod and Amdouni is eights. What? It's ridiculous. We shouldn't be in this position. And then the best one of the lot. One nil down, need a goal. You look to your bench like, oh, what can I bring on here? We we'll have a striker, we can bring someone on. No. We brought Luke McNally on. Luke McNally to play up front. Not good enough. I, we've come out of the Premier League and people are blinded. They believe like, oh, you have to sell everyone. It's a part of going that. It's not. Don't ever be told it is because it's not. You don't have to. It's a choice. We sold players to bridge the financial gap and now we're just selling because it's like a fire sale. They just see profit. It's profit. It's either profit, that greedy that they want to get all the profit in or they're in some sort of financial difficulty because you wouldn't sell otherwise. So some there's something wrong at that football club. I don't know what it is. I'm not involved high enough to know what it is, but something's wrong because these players don't all come and ask to leave. So it's the club's choice to sell some of these. 15 wouldn't ask to leave. So I don't know. Today's a sick now. If, they, if they'd have got a point, you'd have taken it and said, all right, fair enough. We'll move on to the next one. But to turn in that performance. I said it last week against Cardiff. I, I said we were poor for an hour. We were poor. And again, I had people saying, oh, you just being negative. We we weren't. like In this league, if you turn up like you do against Cardiff, you won't be tuning up at half-time every week. We should have lost that game. Well, at least the first half last week. We 5-0 was a fallacy. Like It was a complete fabrication of the game. It weren't a 5-0 game. We got what we deserved today. And last week, we got away, we won massively. But today, we got what we deserve. And I tell you, if they turn up like that next week against them lot, they'll turn us over because they're not as bad as people don't give them credit. They're not as bad as people say. So, well, they played Derby. Don't matter. They stuck four on them. It's that simple. If you stick four on anyone in this league, you probably, over the balance of play, you probably do deserve to win the game. Same with us last week. We stuck five on someone. Balance of the game, you probably deserve to win it. But if you turn up like that today, they'll beat you. 10 years, 11 years since they last beat you, however long it was. They'll beat you next week if you turn up like you did today. It's a massive week in the transfer window for this club. They've got to get it right. We need five, six proper bodies in through the door. And I'm talking like proper players, not any of this... Signing like Redmonds and Townsends and all them t sort of players. I mean, proper players to come in and improve this team now. Because if, if we don't get them in, we ain't getting out of this league. That squad today was a joke and it's not good enough to go up.